Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I'm Venkat. This is part 58. In this session, we'll understand what is equals method and the reasons to override that. Now, let's say I have two integer variables, i and j, both carrying value 10. So in the i equals 10 and j equals 10. And let's say I want to check if these values are equal and there are two ways to do that. One is i equal to j. So obviously we are using the comparison operator and the other way to check that is to actually use i and look at that. When I say dot you see that there is a method called equals. Okay, so where is that equals method coming from? Okay, now we know that within .NET, every type directly or indirectly inherits from system.object. And if you look at system.object, so if you look at the system.object type, and I right click and select go to definition, you see that there is an equals method. Okay, so and, and if you observe, it's a virtual method, meaning it has some default implementation. Okay, so what what is the use of this equals method? It basically checks the equality of values. For example, here, i is carrying a value of 10, j is, carry, is carrying a value of 10. So are those values equal? If they are, then that method returns true. And look at this, it's virtual, meaning it has a default implementation in the system.object class. And if the derived types want to override that, that's possible. Okay, but for value types, we don't have to necessarily do that. Okay, uh, let's understand that a bit more. So, but understand, you know, for the time being, this equals method is actually coming from system.object. And keep in mind, system.object actually provides, you know, the equals method, get hash code, and then two string method, which we have seen, and as well get type. So, if you look at this equals, get type, get hash code, and two string. All these four methods actually will be present on any type within .NET framework because every type directly or indirectly inherits from system.object. Okay, so now if I want to compare the values of i to j, I can use the comparison operator. I can also use the equals method. Now look at this. When we run this, okay, both of them returns true. Okay, i is equal to j, i dot equals j, both of them returns true. And along the same lines, let's say for example, enums, we know they are value types. Let's say I have an enum called direction, for example. So public enum, let's say direction is the enum. And obviously we know the directions east, west, north and south. So let's say east equals 1, west equals 2 north equals 3 and south equals 4. Okay, now I can create a variable of, you know, type direction enum. Let's say direction. Let's call this direction 1. Let's say that's east. And along the same lines, let's create another direction. And let's say this is direction 2. Now, just like how you're comparing, you know, integer types, you can also compare enums in spite of their underlying values, you know, we know that the underlying values for these enums by default is an integer. If you don't know what enums are and when we should be using enums, we have a video recorded on that. So I strongly suggest, you know, checking that video first. So direction one dot equals direction two. Okay, so now if we run, since enum is also value type and values, you know, basically equal to operator and equals method, both of them returns true because they are the same. But on the other hand, if you just say, okay, instead of east, let's say west, and obviously both of them now should actually return false. So both of them return false, and that makes sense. Now, this equals and, you know, the equals method and equal to operator, both of them work as expected if these are simple types. But however, when it comes to reference types, let's say, for example, I have a class, okay? Let's say I have a class called customer, and this class has got two public properties. Let's say public string, 
maybe first main. Let's make this an auto implemented property with a default get and set accessors. And along the same lines, let's have last name. All right, a very simple class that we have here. Now let's create an instance of this customer class. So customer C1 is equal to new customer. Let's say C1 dot first name is equal to Simon and maybe C1 dot last name is equal to 10. All right, and then Let's create another customer object, customer C2, but I'm not going to new up this, but I'm just going to say, okay, C2 is equal to C1. So now, with this code, you should have understood already, you know, there are two object reference variables here, but the object itself is one, okay? If you're not sure about the object reference variables and objects, you know, the difference between them, I strongly encourage you to check the video on classes introduction in this series. Okay, now if you look at this, in this example, we have two object reference variables, C1 and C2. Okay, these two reside on the stack, whereas the object itself, the customer object is one. Okay, so both of these reference variables are pointing to that object. Okay, so we have two different object reference variables, but the object itself is one. Okay, now let's see how these are going to work. So when I say C1, is equal to C2 and similarly C1 equals C2. Now if you look at this technically, when we run this, both of them returns true and that makes sense because look at this, actually in C sharp when we are comparing reference types there are two things that we were talking about equality here. One is the reference equality or the object reference variables pointing to the same object that is the same references are they pointing to the same object in that case if they are pointing to the same object then we say the references are equal and obviously when references are equal the values will also tend to be equal because it's the same object okay now whether you say c1 dot first name or c2 dot first name you end up getting simon why because both of them are actually pointing to the same object so when two object reference variables are pointing to the same object, operations on one variable will affect the values contained by another variable. Why? Because they point to the same object. Okay, so the point to keep in mind here is if two reference variables point to the same object, we have reference equality there. And at the same time, values equality as well because the first and last name of C1 is the same as first and last name of C2. They both, the first name is Simon, the last name is Tan. So when references are equal, the values will automatically become equal if they point to the same object. Okay, so here it returns true in both the cases, which is, you know, very much valid. But on the other hand, let's say I'm going to create another instance of this, another new customer. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm creating another new object altogether, okay? Now, C1 and C2 are pointing to two different objects together. So, obviously, they are not pointing to the same object. They are not referring to the same object. So, the reference equality, which is this double equals, will be false. But if you look at the values that are carried by C1, Simon is the first name, Tan is the last name. Similarly, for C2, Simon is the first name, Tan is the last name, okay? So, the value equality is there, but there is no reference equality. Why? Because these two reference variables are now pointing to different objects on the heap, okay? So, the point to keep in mind, if reference equality is true, then obviously the value will value equality will also become true. But on the other hand, value equality does not guarantee reference equality. And remember, when it comes to reference types, by default, the double equals comparison operator, you know, gives us reference equality, whereas the equals method, you know, should be giving the value equality. But now, when I run, both the reference equality and value equality returns false, which doesn't make sense here. Because why? If you look at C2, you know, the first and last name are same as that of first and last name of C1. 
okay so the value equality should be true but reference equality is false and that makes sense because they are two different references to objects all right so this is the reason when we actually have to override the equals method to ensure we get what we expect okay and the reason why we get false is that because of the default implementation because you know the default implementation that's coming from the base class doesn't know what properties to check for the equality okay that's when we will override that inherited virtual equals method from system.object so let's see how to override that and it's very simple to override so override what we want to override the equals method and look at that the moment i select that i get the signature of the method now what we need to do first of all look at this what we are passing in is the object type we are not passing in the customer object if you remember this two string i mean sorry this equals method is actually coming from system.object type okay so system.object if you look at the signature in system.object what we are passing in here an object type so that the signature has to match the signature because why we are overriding that okay so now the passed in parameter to compare you know should not be null so what you need to check so if object if the passed in parameter if it is null then are they equal no they are not equal so what should you do you should return false and similarly you know if they don't pass in customer object okay or any type that is derived from customer object if they don't pass in that then it doesn't make sense to compare you cannot compare a customer object's first name with maybe an employee name's employee id okay but you know you have to compare two customer objects together okay it can be customer type or it can be any other type derived from customer class because let's say for example you have a customer class from the customer class there might be you know banking customer or corporate customer and uh, retail customer okay so inherited types can also be passed in because why you know inherited types are again your specialized types of your base type okay again if you're not sure about inheritance please check the video tutorial on inheritance in this video series okay so another check that we need to pass in if if the passed in object is not the customer type or if it's not an inherited member of the customer type then we want to return false why because you cannot compare it otherwise okay so if that object is customer if that's customer fine but if it is not customer then what we need to do we need to basically return false so if the past in object cannot be typecasted to customer of, or if it's not customer type then just return false and finally what we need to check the past in objects first and last name should be equal to this instance of first and last name so we want to return this dot first name should be equal to passed in objects first name but if you look at that passed in object doesn't have first name property why because that is system dot object it's the base type so what we need to do we need to typecast this to customer type okay if we are not able to do this then it would have already returned false so we wouldn't we wouldn't get we would never get to this line so customer dot first name so they should be equal and along the same lines the last name should also be equal so what you can do just copy that that's it so if they are equal then return true otherwise return false okay so now if we run this for the value equality since we have overridden that um, it's still you know returning false let's see why okay we have simon tan both of the values are equal let's look at the implementation okay the first name should be equal to the first name of the past in object similarly the last name should be equal to the past in last name so it looks fine 
but for some reason we are still getting false so let's see why let's put a breakpoint and let's debug that okay let's put a breakpoint against this one run this okay so we got there let's press f11 so we get into the override so object is not null because we passed in the customer object so let's press f10 so object is of type customer so obviously we don't get that and look at this this dot first name what's the first name simon and similarly the objects oh look at that the passed in objects first name property is null let us see why it is null okay look at that that's the problem here c1 dot first name because we copy pasted this code here that's why that's why c1 dot first name and c1 dot last name it should be c2 dot first name and c2 dot last name so let's correct that so this is how you know when you copy copy paste code you should be extremely cautious you know these are the blunders of copy paste so now if we run that we should get the value equality to true but however there is a slight issue here the issue is if you look at this there is a green squiggly and we know that within dotnet framework if it's a green squiggly then it's a warning and not an error and if you look at the warning it says okay the customer class overrides object dot equals but doesn't override object dot get hash code so if you look at system dot object class it has equals method and at the same time it has get hash code okay so in your class if you are overriding equals it's also recommended that you override get hash code otherwise the hash codes are not guaranteed to be unique that's why it's a very good practice to actually override the get hash code method as well and it's very simple to override that okay so let's see how to override the get hash code so that we get rid of this warning and to do that override and then press space and you have that get hash code method just select that and you get the you know uh, syntax of the method and what we need to do here is return the hash code if you look at this property this class it has got two properties first and last name so return the hash code of these two properties and that should be it so return this dot first name dot get hash code and that with this dot last name dot get hash code that's it so now if you rebuild your solution you should have got rid of that warning so that's gone now you don't have any warning now and obviously you run this you know for the reference equality we get false but for value equality we get true so obviously if you want the objects to be comparable in a proper way you have to override the equals method and when you are overriding the equals method keep in mind you have to check if the past in object is now or and if you can typecast the object to the type that you are comparing against in our case this is customer so we should be in a position to typecast that to be of type customer and then compare the properties that you want to check for the equality and return true or false depending on equality all right on this slide you can find resources for asp.net and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day